After completing this lesson, you will be able to create a new project file, add frequently used folders, select the Folder Options Templates Metric option, and review Content Center Standards. In File Explorer, I've created a Bottle Filling Station folder, and underneath that folder, I've created five subfolders Assemblies, Drawings, Parts, Presentations, and Purchase Parts. With those created, we can now go over to Autodesk Inventor and create a new project. From the My Home page, I could go to Launch Projects. I'm going to go to File, Manage, Projects. In the Projects dialog box, we can see the names of four projects currently available. I'm going to click on New, Next for a single user project. The name of the project will be Bottle Filling Station. And the location of the Project Workspace folder, I'm going to set that to a folder on my hard drive, the D drive, and I've created a folder already, you'll be doing the same thing, called Bottle Filling Station, with five folders. Click OK. Then click Next. I'm not going to be adding any libraries, so we can click Finish. The project file is created, and it's the active project. Let's look at some of the options. Under Appearance Libraries, there are three. The one in bold is the Active Library, Material Libraries, and under Workspace, you see the name Workspace. I'm going to edit that and change it to Station. and the folder is the bottle filling station that we created. Click in the background. Work group search paths and libraries will leave. Right click on the frequently used subfolders and add a path. Now those five folders come into play. The first one is assemblies. Let's go to the location of that assembly subfolder and select it, then click OK. Click in the background. Let's do one more. Right click, add path. Change the name from folder, and in this case it will be drawings. Go to the location of the drawing subfolder. Select that, and click OK. I've gone ahead and created the other three, Parts, Presentations, and Purchase Parts. Under Folder Options, I'm going to right-click on Templates, Edit. Currently, it's pointing to the EN-US folder. And all of those templates are available. I'm going to narrow it down to Metric, so select Metric. And in Options, we'll leave all those the same. Over to Configure Content Center Libraries, and we'll note there are check marks beside all of them. I'm going to remove some of those check marks so that when we search in the Content Center Libraries, there will be far fewer to select from. Click OK. Save those changes and click Done. Let's start a new file and see what the effects are. So immediately we can see only metric templates are available. Start a standard part file. Let's create a simple part. So we'll go to Start 2D Sketch. Select the XZ plane. Then a rectangle, any dimension. Finish the sketch. Press E on the keyboard for Extrude. The single profile is selected. Click OK. Now when we save this file, we see the folder names. Now you'll notice that there's one called Old Versions. That was created when we created the project file. You can delete that. 
In the window pane on the left, you see the frequently used subfolders we created, from assemblies down to purchased parts, and you'll also notice the path to those. Content Center Files is the default folder. With that complete, we can now move on to Application Options and Document Settings in the next lesson. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to review the application options, review and modify the document settings, and review the eye properties of a part. I've started by opening a purchase part. The file name is p-100-033. Let's start by looking at the application options. On the Tools tab, application options, and there are many of them, Let's start on the General tab. In the General tab, we can set the text appearance, both the font and the size. The undo file size can be interesting if you're using large assemblies. You may want to change that from the default of 1024 megabytes. And that file is stored in File Undo, and there you see the listing of where that is. Many users change that location. If you want to change the Select Other Delay, it's two seconds by default. And also the tooltips, those could be turned on or off. Let's move to the Colors tab. For this setup, I'm using a light UI theme. The color scheme is light. And I'm using a background image that I created. This is a custom background image, RGB values of 237, 237, 237. They're stored in the Backgrounds folder. I saved there as a PNG file. Here you can see all the different options that you have for the background. Click Cancel. Let's move to the Display tab. When editing in an assembly, this value sets the inactive components to 25% opacity. View Transition Time controls the time to transition smoothly between views, for example, returning to the home view or zoom all. Interesting one for people is how the mouse scroll wheel works. If I zoom in or out, which way does the scroll wheel work? You can set that up yourself by checking reverse direction. On the hardware tab, the graphics settings are set to quality. If you're unsure about the graphics card you're using, you can change that to software graphics. Click Close. Changes to application options apply to the Autodesk Inventor application. So regardless of the file you're working on, the changes we just made will apply to all those files. Unlike document settings, which we're going to look at now, which are specific to the file that you're working on. The first tab is Standard. That sets the lighting. And also note that there's a custom property for the material in this purchase part. Under Units, under Model Dimensioning Display, let's change that to two decimal places for linear and one decimal place for angular. Under Sketch, those values are good. Moving over to the Modeling tab, those are also good. And Bill of Materials, I mentioned this as a purchase part, but it's currently set to Normal. So of the five options, select Purchased. Under Default Tolerance, if you wish to set this, check Use Standard Tolerancing Values. There are two values, Precision and Tolerance. Click to add a precision of two decimal places. This is a plus minus value, so we'll set 0 0.05. With those values set, we can click OK. I know that the material for this part is a custom material. So let's right click on the part in the browser, select Eye Properties, and have a look at that. On the Physical tab, we can see that material. The density is set, but we need to update to get the general properties. Click Update. And we can see the mass is 0.76 kilograms. And click Close.
After completing this lesson, you will be able to navigate the user interface, use Direct Edit to modify whole dimensions, add annotation to the part, and save the file. Starting with the p-100-033 file, on the navigation bar, click Look At and select the front face. Right-click on Front, and I can see Perspective with Ortho Faces was not turned on. You can also go to View, and from the drop-down list, select Perspective with Ortho Faces. That's the one I prefer. Right-click on the View Cube, set the current view as Front. Click the top right corner of the View Cube, right-click again, and set the current view as Home, Fit to View. Zooming in on that hole, the company wants us to use M8 or M6 bolts. I'm measuring this one, I can see it's 8.1. Let's go up to the three holes on the top, right click in the background, restart, and that's 5.5. .5. So keeping those dimensions in mind, we need to change those values. If I go to the browser, and expand solid bodies, then solid, I see a base solid. That means this was imported. So I'll be using Direct Edit to make the changes to the whole diam. I'm looking at a holes chart for M6 and M8. The M6 is a nominal drill size of 6.6, .6, whereas the M8 is 9. And those are the diameters we need. I've zoomed into the first hole, click on that, and then click on the Direct Edit, select Size, and from the list, select Diameter. Currently 8.1, change that to 9. And close that down. We need a different workflow for the three holes. Select the first hole, hold down the Control key, and select the other two. On the Modify panel, click Direct. Size is already selected. Go to our list and select Diameter. Change it from 5.5 to 6.6. .6 and close that down. Right-click and Measure. And obviously that's 6.6. .6. I want to make a note of those changes, so on the Annotate tab, click Leader Text. The active standard is ISO with a selection of 4. Click OK. Select the edge of the hole. And in the Format Text dialog box, enter Hole, select Diameter from the Symbols, Change the 2 and put the value in, 9 millimeters. click OK. So that's the default alignment. You can right-click on the text and you can change a number of things. For example, toggle alignment. I think the first one's better. Back to the original. On the Notes panel, click Leader Text. And add the second note. Very similar. Hold diameter, change 2 and in this case, 6.6 .6 millimeters. And click OK. When you rotate the part, the text is always correctly aligned. We often think of annotation on a drawing, but keep in mind you can annotate a part or an assembly. And don't forget to save the file. After completing this lesson, we'll be able to zoom into a part feature, review the tooltips for a command, use Select Other, review the view transition time, and review inactive component appearance. I've started by opening two files, P-100-033, and an assembly, A-010-001. Back to the part file. On the Tools tab, click Application Options. 
On the General tab, we can see the tooltips are set to 2 seconds and 1 second. Click Close. In Document Settings on the Units tab, the linear precision is set to two decimal places, and also for the default tolerance. Click Close. Back to the 3D Model tab. Tooltips can be very useful. For example, Combine is a command that's not used very often, and it's a good way to review the command. I'm zooming in on the part that I want to focus on. So I'm zooming in by rolling the wheel forward or backwards. It's a personal preference that can be changed. On the 3D Model tab, click Start 2D Sketch. Hover until Select Other is displayed after 2 seconds. I can then select the top face. In that case, there were only two faces. When there are more, it's very useful. On the View tab, make sure that Perspective with Ortho Faces is selected. On the 3D Model tab, Sketch Panel, click Line, draw a horizontal line, and then a line up to the right. I'm creating four lines. We can see some constraints have already been applied. On the Constraint Panel, click Equal, then select the lines. If the constraint exists, you will get a message. Click Cancel. This one should also be equal, which it is. On the Constraint panel, click Parallel. Select one line, then select the other. Working my way around the model. Again, if the constraint exists, click Cancel. On the Constraint panel, click Dimension. Add a dimension between one line and the other of 35. Between the two sloping lines, the dimension is 15. Then the horizontal line and the bottom line is a dimension of 35. There is one dimension required to fully constrain the sketch. Enter a value of 70 for the length of one of the lines. The sketch is now fully constrained, shown by the color of the sketch and indicated in the bottom right hand corner. Right click and click OK. Right click and click Create Feature Extrude. The profile is selected. I can then drag it down, which makes it a cut in the output. For distance, select 2. Again, wait for Select Other, then select the lower face. Click OK. On the Modify panel, click Fillet. Select the four corners. So, one, two, three, and four. The edges do not have to be visible to select them. For Radius, enter a value of five, then click OK. Back to the Home view. Close the file and do not save the file. In the assembly file, I'm zooming in on the part I want to look at, so I'm rolling the mouse wheel forward. It's centered on that part. Double click to edit the part. The other parts are set to 25% opacity as set in Application Options. A reminder that Application Options are applied to all files, but Document Settings are set and saved with individual files. Close the assembly. Do not save the file.
After completing this lesson, you'll be able to open the supplied PDF and review the design criteria. I've opened the PDF and there are six statements. We're going to be designing a 16 bottle filling station with circular indexing tables. Low cost is a priority and the filling process will be semi-automated. And our next step is to review the sketch which shows the dimensions of the frame. These are the dimensions shown in the PDF file. We also see the material is stainless steel. And we'll be using these dimensions in the next lesson, which is creating the base frame skeleton for the frame. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to use Extrude to create the frame base and add lines to the base for the support frame members. I'm starting a new file. That's going to be a standard millimeter part file. Click Create. Once the file is open, I'm going to go and save the file. Keep in mind that we have Station as our workspace, and underneath that, all of our folders. We're saving this in the Parts folder. And the file name will be Frame. Click Save. With the file saved, I'm going to go and start a new sketch. On the Create panel, click Rectangle. Select the origin and drag the rectangle out to the right. The first value is 1500. Press the Tab key. 2500. Press Enter, then right click and select OK. It's a very large rectangle, so let's return to the home view. Often find with these large rectangles, the dimensions end up on the line, so just drag those away from that. On Exit, click Finish Sketch. On Create, click Extrude. Single profile, so already selected. For distance A, 1150. And click OK. Back to Home. The default material and appearance make it look solid. I want to be able to look through this, so I've selected Polycarbonate Clear from the Appearance list. Save the file again. On the Sketch panel, click Start 2D Sketch and select the front face. Just pan over. I'm going into the top left corner. On Create panel, click Line. Making sure I'm exactly on the line so it's coincident. And draw a line about 45 degrees. On the Constraint panel, click Dimension. Select a line and drag out. The first dimension is 500. Repeat that, dragging to the left. Instead of keying in 500, I'm going to select the first dimension. I want that 500 dimension to drive all of the dimensions that I'm going to be placing. Pan over. Create Panel, Line. Place the line. On the Constraint Panel, Dimension. Place that dimension. I want it to be 500, but again, I'm just going to pan over and select that first one. Not the FX one, but the 500. Now you'll notice it's D20. So in the future, I can just key in D20 or click on the dimension if it's easily accessible. Accept that. Return to the home view. So the first face now has those lines on it. I need to repeat that for three more faces. So I've gone ahead, added all the lines to the three other vertical faces, and you'll notice that only one dimension is 500. All the others are driven by that dimension. I'm going to the browser, select Sketch 6 and Mine, hold down the Shift key, select Sketch 9, right-click and turn off the dimension visibility, and save the file.
After completing this lesson, you'll be able to place the frame part into a new assembly, size the frame members based on the design criteria, and insert the frame members into the design. I'm clicking New to start a new file. It's going to be a standard metric assembly. Click Create. When the file is created, click Save. Saving that into the Assemblies subfolder. And the file name will be Bottle Filling Station. Click Save. With the file saved, we want to go to Component Place and from the Part subfolder, select Frame and click Open. Right click and OK. Now you notice the orientation is incorrect, so let's correct that. Just spin around a little. Click on Look At and select the front face. On the View tab, let's select Perspective with Ortho Faces. Right-click on the View Cube. Set the current view as Front. On the View Cube, click the top right corner. Right-click. Set the current view as Home. Fit to View. Let's click on the Assemble tab. What we need to do is insert frames. And to do that, we need to go to the Design tab. On the Frame panel, click Insert Frame. Let's check the properties. On the Frame Member, category is Square Rectangular Tube, Standard ISO. The family is ISO 10799-2 Square, and the size 60 by 60 by 5. The material stainless steel, and the appearance will leave that as As Material. Let's select the first line, zoom into there, we can click on these white dots, and those are known as radio buttons. So you can see how that frame member moves around. We could also go to the Zoom tools. It's very handy if it's an awkward situation in terms of placement of that frame member. This gives you a perpendicular view. Then we can use the Zoom tools to return to the initial view. We could also offset or rotate, which is not required in this case. I find when you're taking four legs like this and moving them inwards, you have to do them one at a time. So I'm just checking to make sure. So I'm going to right click and apply. Click OK. That creates the new frame. Then click OK for frame member naming. Over to the second one, select that and select the correct radio button. Let's see if we can get that third one to work. That's incorrect. Zoom in, see if we can change that. Just pulling the cursor away and trying again. It's not going to work, so right-click Apply. Click OK. And that completes the second of the legs on the table. Now to the third one. Let's change that by going to the radio button. Right click and apply. Click OK. Let's add the fourth one just to complete the four legs of the table. Select the radio button. Right-click and Apply. Click OK. We don't need to cancel. We can continue on. Select in the top left in this case. And this should work quite well. That one's correct. Rotating around. That's good. I 
and let's add the fourth one to complete the top of the frame. Right click and apply. Then click OK. Click Cancel. And return to the home view. Let's zoom into one corner. You can see how those three frame members come together. Now we need to apply end treatments. After completing this lesson, you will be able to use end treatments to modify the frame. With the base frame complete, let's add end treatments. To make the frame, I would make the top part and miter the four corners, then weld that, then trim the leg and weld that to the frame. In the browser, right-click frame and turn off the visibility. On the frame panel, click Trim Extend. Rotate and select the lower face. Now we can select all four legs. and click OK. On the frame panel, click Miter. Notice there's a gap of 0 millimeters. We may want to consider changing that depending how the welding is performed. We will be doing one corner at a time. Select both frames, right-click Apply. Working my way around, right-click Apply, and complete the process by selecting the fourth corner. Right-click, Apply, and Cancel. Let's review that. We can see the miter corner and the leg trimmed to the underside. We're now ready to add the supports. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to insert frame members into the design to support the frame structure. In the browser, right-click Frame and turn on the visibility. On the Frame panel, click Insert Frame. Checking the frame member properties, they're good. On larger projects, you may want to consider presets. Start selecting the frames. We'll find in this section of the project that all eight do work. Just double checking. And continue to work around. Selecting and checking. If you're not getting the right solution, move the cursor off the line, move it back on, and you should get the correct solution. Another example of just moving the cursor off to make sure that it's correct. And then on to the last one. Having completed that, we can right-click and apply. Click OK. On the View Cube, click back. If there are any errors, they're pretty obvious. Return to the Home view and click Cancel. In the browser, right-click Frame and turn off the visibility. On the Frame panel, click Trim Extend. Rotate around and select the underside face of the top frame. 
In this case, you're able to select all eight of those structural members. And with all eight selected, we can then right click and apply. And they're all trimmed to the underside of the frame. I can now continue with Trim Extend. So I've completed the frame. Again, just double checking. And returning to the home view. In the browser, expand one of the frame members. You can see Trim Extend. Right click on it, and you can either delete or edit. So for example, where we had a gap of zero millimeters for the miter, we can come in and edit those if the design requires that. We're now ready to start the frame analysis. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to run a frame analysis and compare the results to the design criteria. With the frame assembly open, on the design tab, we can see Frame Analysis, and on the Environments tab, it's also available. We'll work from the Design tab, that's where we've been using the Insert Frame. Click Frame Analysis. On the Manage panel, click Create Simulation. For name, enter Station 01. Click OK. This is a static analysis. We see an error message. Let's have a look at that. Torsional sectional modulus is zero. Let's see what that means. Expand beams in the browser. Right click, beam properties. And on the right hand side, we see the value WZ is zero. Click cancel. A review of the help section suggests that if there is no torsion, then you can continue. In this case, we can proceed. Zooming in, we see the conversion that's taken place, the line down the middle, and the nodes where there's a connection. Collapse beams in the browser. On the constraints panel, click Fix. We're going to place four fixed constraints at the end of each of the legs. Right click to repeat the command and continue selecting the fixed constraint location. Right click again and add that fourth fixed constraint and return to the home view. On the Loads panel, click Continuous Load and select the first beam. For magnitude, the current value is 10 newtons per millimeter. The perimeter of our frame is 8,000 millimeters. The design criteria tell us there's going to be a load of 500 kilograms. 500 kilograms is 5,000 newtons. So the calculation suggests that we're less than one newton per millimeter. We'll use a value of one. So enter one for magnitude and accept that. Repeat the command. We're going to work our way around entering a magnitude of one for each of the beams. So right click, repeat, select, enter one, and check. On the Solve panel, click Simulate. In a few seconds, the results are displayed. The first result we see is displacement, 0 0.6412 millimeters. That's not a lot, so that sounds good. First time people run a simulation, to think that looks a lot more than 0.6 of a millimeter.
On the design panel, from the adjust list, select actual. That's the actual 0.6 displacement. Let's go back to adjusted times one in the list. On the result panel, click animate. From the speed list, select slow. Then click play. So the animation shows the displacement on the frame. As expected, in the center section where there's no support, that's the maximum displacement. The load is transmitted through the supports, and you can see the legs moving outwards. All very small values. Click OK. Let's go to Results, then Forces, and select FY. So the force in the vertical direction, FY, is 897 newtons maximum. And that occurs towards the ends and less in the center. We can also create a report. So on the Publish panel, Report. For this project, we don't need one, so we can click Cancel. On the Exit panel, click Finish Frame Analysis and return to the Home view. After completing this lesson, you will be able to insert end caps onto the frame. With the frame assembly open, click on the Design tab. And I'm looking at Insert End Cap. But before I do that, I'm going to go to File, Manage, Projects. Click on Configure Content Center Libraries. And we need to double check that Custom Content is checked. In my case, it's at the top. Scroll down if you can't see it, and make sure there's a check mark beside Custom Content. That's where the data for the end plates are stored. On the Frame panel, click Insert End Cap. We have to start by selecting the faces. In this example, the faces at the bottom of the four legs. As soon as we do that, we see a preview. I'm going with the default placement. There is a second option, which puts the end cap inside the frame. So we're selecting the last of the four faces, and back to our data. For profile, we want filleted corners. The fillet radius is going to be 10. Thickness of the material, we'll leave that at 5. Offset profile is correct, and we're going to change that to negative 50. Material, from the material list, we're going to select stainless steel. and the appearance as material. Click OK. Click OK in the Frame Member Naming dialog box. Let's zoom into one of the end plates. This end plate will be welded as part of the assembly during installation of the bottle filling station. Four holes will be drilled in the end plates. These will be for bolts so that the frame can be attached to the floor. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create clearance holes and create rectangular patterns of the holes. I've started by opening the bottle filling station assembly file. We're going to be placing clearance holes on the top of the frame. On the 3D model tab, click Start 2D Sketch and select the top face of the frame. Zoom into the lower left corner of the frame. On the View tab, make sure that Perspective with Ortho Faces is selected. On the Sketch tab, click Project Geometry. Select the outside edges. On the Create panel, click Point. Place one point 
then right click and click General Dimension. I'm going to be placing two dimensions. The first value is 150. From the point to the horizontal edge, and that dimension is 30. Right-click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Click Hole. The hole is a clearance hole. The seed is none, and for fastener, it's ISO, socket head cap screw, and M12. For termination, select 2, then click Select Surface. Rotate the model and select the underside face. We can see the hole dimensions are preset. Click OK. The hole is placed in the frame. Right click and click New Sketch. Select the top face of the frame. Zoom and pan to the lower left corner. On the Create panel, click Project Geometry and select the vertical and horizontal edges. On the Create panel, click Point. Place the point, then right-click and click General Dimension. The first dimension is 150, and the second dimension from the point to the vertical line is 30. Right-click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Click Hole. The settings are saved from the previous hole placement. Click Select Surface, rotate the assembly, and select the underside surface of the frame. Then click OK. Back to the Home view. With the holes created, we're now ready to create rectangular patterns. On the Pattern panel, click Rectangular. Zoom in and select the feature. For Direction 1, select the long edge. And for Count, enter 5. And for Spacing, enter 2200 divided by 4. For Direction 2, select the other edge. The count of 2 is correct. We need to flip that direction. And for Spacing, enter 1440. Zoom out to check the preview, then click OK. A right click, then click Repeat Rectangular Pattern. Select the feature. For Direction 1, select the shorter edge. We need to flip that direction. For Count, enter 3. And for Spacing, enter 1200 divided by 2. For Direction 2, select the long edge. The count of 2 is correct. And for Spacing, enter 2440. Check the preview, then click OK. Return to the Home view. So the clearance through holes are now created on the frame. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create the base plate component in place. Starting with the bottle filling station assembly open, on the component panel click Create. The new component name is Base, and the template is going to be a standard millimeter part file. The file location is going to be in the Parts subfolder. Click Save. The default BOM structure, the Bill of Materials, is normal. And I've checked Constrain Sketch Plane to select a face or plane. Click OK. Select the top face. And if you look at the browser, you'll notice a flush constraint has been added to the Relationships folder. On the Sketch panel, click Start 2D Sketch. 
select the top face of the frame. And in the browser, right click the work plane and select visibility to turn off the visibility of the work plane. On the create panel, click project geometry. Move the cursor over the face to highlight the profile, then select the edge. Moving the cursor over the face and then selecting the edge. On the Create panel, click Rectangle. The upper frame is going to be attached to the lower frame, to the base frame, and we have to cut out four corners, four notches to allow that to happen. So 60 millimeters, press Tab, 65. So we're going to create four 60 by 65 notches in the corner of the base. Enter 60, tab 65, and add two more. And on to the last one. Return to the Home view. We could click Finish Sketch, but let's look at other alternatives. A little bit quicker, we can right-click Create Feature Extrude. Select the profile. Distance A is going to be 50 millimeters. And press Enter or click OK. Under Material, I'm selecting polyethylene high density. Let's make it a different color. Pressing B on the keyboard quickly took me to the appearances, starting with the letter B, and selecting blue, wall paint, glossy. We can now finish the edit, so right click, finish edit, and save the file. Click OK. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to add counterboard holes to the base plate. I've started by opening the bottle filling station assembly file. Let's review the holes on the frame. When we added the holes to the frame, they were added at the assembly level. For the base, we're going to add the holes at the part level. When the bottle filling station is being made, the holes in the base plate will be a template for drilling the holes in the frame. Let's start by going to the browser. Right-click Base, then click Edit. As we create the holes in the base plate, we'll take advantage of the holes in place on the frame. Right-click, then click New Sketch. Select the top surface of the base plate. Zoom in to the bottom left-hand corner of the frame. On the Create panel, click Project Geometry. Project the top faces of the frame, making sure you're including the holes in the projected geometry. Zoom and pan to the top right-hand corner and select the two faces. We now have the center points of all 16 holes. Right-click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Right-click, then click Hole. We can then go around the base plate and select the center points of all the holes. All 16 center points have been selected. We can check the value in input geometry positions that all 16 have been selected. The hole type is clearance. The seat is counterbore.
The standard is ISO. Type is socket head cap screw. Size is M12. And termination is 2. We can either use select other or rotate around and select the underside face. Make sure that select surface is checked and select the underside surface. The holes are displayed. Click OK. All 16 counterboard holes are created on the base plate. Right click, then click Finish Edit. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you will be able to place cap screws, washers, and nuts in the assembly using Content Center. I've started by opening the Bottle Filling Station assembly file. On the Component panel, click Place from Content Center. Expand the fasteners and the bolts folders. Click on socket head and select ISO 4762. Click OK. Place one component, then click Change Size. Select M12, and for nominal length select 120. Click OK. Place two cap screws in the assembly. Right click, then click OK. We could use joints or constraints to locate the cap screw. Let's use a different technique. Hold down the Alt key, select the lower diameter, and drag it over the hole to highlight the lower edge of the hole, then release to place the cap screw. Same procedure again. Hold down the Alt key. Select the lower diameter and drag it over the hole to highlight the lower edge, then release to place the cap screw. Rotate the frame to view the underside of the frame. On the component panel, click Place from Content Center. Expand the Washers folder, select Plane, and select ISO 7089. Click OK. Place the washer. Then change the size to M12. Click OK. Place two washers. For the washers, let's use joints. On the Relationship panel, click Joint. Change type to Rigid. Select the center point on the washer and on the underside of the face of the frame. Click Apply. Repeat the workflow to place the second washer. Click OK. On the Component panel, click Place from Content Center. Expand the Nuts folder, click on Hex, and select ISO 4032. Click OK. Place one component and change the size to M12. Click OK. Place two components in the assembly. Right click, then click OK. Let's use the Alt Drag method again. Hold down the Alt key, select the edge of the nut, then the underside of the washer. Repeat the workflow. Both cap screw assemblies are now placed in the frame assembly. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create patterns of the cap screw assemblies. I have opened the bottle filling station assembly. On the pattern panel, click Pattern. Zoom into the left corner and rotate the frame. I want to be able to see the washer, nut, and cap screw. In the browser, move the cursor over each component. Select the component when you see them highlighted in the assembly. I've selected all three. Click the Rectangular tab. Click the Column Direction arrow. Select the top edge of the base plate. 
then rotate around. For count, enter 5. For distance, I can select from the previously used values. The value is 2200 divided by 4. Click the row direction arrow. Select the edge and flip the direction. The count of 2 is correct and for distance the value is 1440. Let's check the pattern preview. The pattern is correct. Click OK. On the Pattern panel, click Pattern. There are only three components remaining. Select the first one, hold down the Shift key, and select the third one. Click the Rectangular tab, select the column direction arrow, select the edge, and flip the direction. Enter 3, and for distance, the value is 1200 divided by 2. Select the Row direction arrow. For distance, the value is 2440. Again, check the preview by rotating the model. The pattern is correct. Click OK and save your file. After completing this lesson, you're going to create a sketch of the bottle. I've started by creating a new metric part file and I'm creating a new sketch on the vertical YZ plane. The height and the width are very different values, so I'm going to zoom and pan out. On the Format panel, click Construction. On the Create panel, click Rectangle. Select the origin and drag to the right. The first dimension is 300. Press Tab and enter 45. Right-click and click OK. This is a reference rectangle to help us create the sketch. We will be adding more dimensions, so let's drag those dimensions away from the sketch. Zoom into the top left-hand corner of the sketch. On the Create panel, click Line. On the Format panel, click Construction. Select the first point, Drag to the right, enter 14. Drag down, enter the value of 25, making sure it's 90 degrees. Drag right and down about 45 degrees and click on the construction line. Because it terminated on that line, we're going to have to click to restart. Click the point, drag down 90 to 100. Again, click to restart, drag to the left a short distance, then down about 70, and back onto the construction line. Click to restart and drag down, but not all the way to the bottom line. Click the end of the line, and then create a sloping line down to the bottom of the sketch. Zoom out. On the Constraint panel, click Dimension. Select the top edge and then the point at the end of the sloping line. Place the dimension and the value is 55. Pan to the bottom of the sketch, then select the sloping line and the vertical line and place an angle dimension of 150. Select the line, drag to the right, and that value is 6. On the Create panel, click Line. Select the end point of the sloping line Drag to the left to create a short horizontal line, then create a sloping line up to the left.
On the constraint panel, click Dimension and place an angular dimension between the two lines. The dimension value is 170. On the Create panel, click Circle. Starting at the origin, right-click. We can either enter the diameter, right-click again, or the radius. The radius value is 6. On the Create panel, click Line. To start the line, click on the origin. Zoom and pan to the top of the sketch and select the end point of the line. Zoom and pan back down to the bottom left corner of the sketch. On the Modify panel, click Extend and extend the sloping line. On the Create panel, click Circle. Create a 2mm radius circle. On the Constraint panel, click Tangent and create tangent constraints between the circle and the line and the two circles. On the Modify panel, click Trim. Don't forget that short vertical line and you'll need to zoom in to view the short line segments. Now trim the circle and that's the profile of the underside of the bottle. On the Constraint panel, click Dimension. I want to dimension that line. If you're not sure, just click the endpoints because there is the construction line in the background. And that dimension is 8. Looking at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, we can see that there are three dimensions needed to fully constrain the sketch. On the Create panel, click Fillet and place 2mm radius fillets at the three sharp corners. Note that these fillets do not affect the number of dimensions required to constrain the sketch. I've saved the file in the Parts subfolder and the file name is Bottle. In the next lesson, we will create user parameters, then add dimensions to fully constrain the sketch. After completing this lesson, you will be able to create user parameters and finish the sketch. I've opened the bottle part file, click on the Manage tab, and on the Parameters panel, click Parameters. Collapse the Model Parameters list, we're going to be adding user parameters. Click Add Numeric. The first parameter is named Grips. Click in the Unit column. Enter UL for Unitless. Click OK. For the equation, enter 5 for the default value. Click Add Numeric. The name is Grips underscore Width. For unit type, millimeters is correct. Click OK. For the equation, enter 17 for the default value. Don't forget to press Enter after entering the value. Click Add Numeric for the third parameter. The name is Grips underscore THK. For unit type, millimeters is correct. Click OK. The value is 2. Click Done. To edit the sketch, we could go to the browser and right-click Edit Sketch. Another workflow is to click on one of the lines in the sketch. We get several options such as Extrude, Revolve, Edit Sketch, and Make Sketch Invisible. Select Edit Sketch. We can see that the sketch needs three dimensions to be fully constrained. Before we complete the sketch, Let's look at some options to change the display. 
The first option is to show constraints. The next one is how the dimensions will be displayed. And the third one we're going to look at is to show the degrees of freedom which I have clicked. Looking at the sketch, the vertical line can move either right or left. The two short lines can move up or down or to the left. Let's go back to the dimension display. Currently it's set to value. Let's select name. The 300 dimension changes to D8 which is the model parameter. Let's set the display back to value and toggle off the degrees of freedom display. On the constraint panel, click dimension. Select the endpoint of the 8mm line, then pan to the short horizontal line. Select the line, then place the dimension to the right. For this value, enter 80. Select the short line, place the dimension, click the right arrow and then list parameters. Select grips underscore THK. The current value is 2. We can now see there's just one dimension needed. Select the vertical line and drag to the right. Place the dimension, click the right arrow, and then list parameters. The equation is grips multiplied by grips underscore width. That sets the current value to 85. Right-click, select Finish 2D Sketch, and that completes the sketch. You can now save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to revolve the sketch, add additional features to the bottle, and use Shell to create a thin wall part. I've opened the bottle part file. This is the fully constrained sketch. Right-click and click Revolve. The profile is selected. We can now select the axis and the part is created. Click OK. Back to the home view. Right click and click Fillet. Select the first edge and enter 30 for the radius. Click Click to Add to select more edges. Select the edge. For this value, we are going to be using parameters. Go to List Parameters and select Grips underscore THK multiplied by 4. Click OK. Right click and click New Sketch. In the browser, expand the Origin folder and select the YZ plane. The sketch is through the center of the bottle. Press F7 for Slice Graphics, or click in the System tray to toggle Slice Graphics on and off. Zoom into the lower left half of the bottle. On the Create panel, click Project Geometry. Select the vertical line. On the Create panel, click Circle. On the Format panel, click Construction. Create a small diameter circle. On the Constraint panel, click Tangent and make the circle tangent to the projected line. On the Constraint panel, click Dimension. Add a dimension from the bottom of the line to the center of the circle. This is a parameter. Select Grips underscore Width, which is visible as previously used, and divide by 2. And that value is 8.5. Dimension the circle. Again, I can select from the list, select grips underscore THK. That's a value of 2. On the Create panel, click Arc. On the Format panel, click Construction. Starting at the bottom of the line and moving above the circle, create an arc. On the Constraint panel, 
click dimension. Dimension from the bottom point of the arc to the top point. This is a parameter. Select grips underscore width. Click the check mark. On the constraint panel, click tangent. Add a tangent constraint between the circle and the arc. A right click and click finish the 2D sketch. Let's zoom in so we can view the sketch. Right click, then click revolve. The profile is selected. In this case, the axis is going to be selected from the browser. And it's the Y axis. Click OK. The Revolve feature is created. On the Pattern panel, click Rectangular. Select a new feature, click Direction, and again select the Y axis. For count, this is going to be a parameter. The parameter is Grips. For the dimension, Go to the parameters, select grips underscore width, click OK. Five grips are added to the bottle, and each of these is 17 millimeters. This workflow allows for multiple patterns of the grips. Back to the home view. On the modify panel, click shell. Select the top face to remove the face. Enter a thickness of 0 0.3. Expand the options and click Click to Add. The material for the threaded feature is thicker, so that section will be 1.5. Click OK. Let's review the model. It's important to think back to when we added the fillets. Now, it would not be possible to add them to the shell feature. When you create a shell part, plan what features you want to be included in the shell. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you will be able to create a revolve feature and split the top section of the bottle. I've started by opening the bottle part file. Right click, then click fill it. Select the edge towards the top of the bottle, and for radius, enter 4. Click, click to add. Zoom and pan to view the inside of the bottle. For radius, enter 2. Click, click to add, and select the two top edges. For radius, enter 0.5. Click OK. Return to the Home view. Right-click, then click New Sketch. In the browser, select the YZ plane. Zoom into the top of the bottle and press F7 for Slice Graphics. On the Create panel, click Project Geometry and select the vertical edge. Right-click, then click Line. Start the line about halfway down the edge and move left and down at 45 degrees. Then straight down about 5 millimeters. A shallow angle for 3 millimeters. And a short vertical line. Add a horizontal line back to the projected edge. Complete the sketch with the vertical line. Right click, then click General Dimension. From the top edge to the top point, the dimension is 10. The next dimension is an angle. The value is 30. For the vertical line, the dimension is 5.
zoom in for the shorter line. Place an angle dimension between the sloping line and the horizontal line. The value is 10. For the short line, the dimension is 1. The horizontal line is 3. One dimension required, and it's the dimension between the two vertical lines. That value is also 1. The sketch is now fully constrained. Right-click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Right-click, then click Revolve. The profile is selected, and the axis is the Y-axis. Click OK. We need to add fillets, so right-click, then click Fillet. Zoom into the area so we can select the edges. We're going to select six edges. The first edge is on the underside, then the two edges above it. Rotate again to select an edge, and then two more. The radius value of 0 0.5 is correct. Click OK. Back to the home view. At the top of the bottle is a thread. Typically, we deal with threads such as ISO. For beverage containers, the thread profile is quite different. Many companies provide their thread designs as PDF files. This is an example of one. Review some of the beverage containers that you have to check the style of thread. Right-click, then click Work Plane. Select the underside face and drag upwards. Enter a value of negative 10. Right-click, then click Repeat Work Plane. Select the Work Plane and drag up. Enter a value of negative 5. We're going to split the face between the work planes. This is the location of the thread, which will be added when a decision is made on the thread design. On the Modify panel, click Split. Select the work plane and the face. Click OK. Repeat the workflow, select the work plane and the face, then click OK. The work planes are visible. Let's turn off the visibility. In the browser, right click Visibility for both work plans. We can now review the split face area where the thread will be located. Back to the home view. Change the material. From the list, select Polyethylene High Density. And change the appearance to Polycarbonate Smoked. Don't forget to save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to import an AutoCAD DWG file, create a Revolve feature, and add fillets to the bottle cap. I've started by creating a new metric part file and named it Bottle Cap. On the Sketch panel, click Start 2D Sketch and select the YZ plane. On the Insert panel, click Insert AutoCAD File. Select the Part subfolder, change Files of Type to AutoCAD DWG Files, and select Bottle Cap. Click Open. After a few seconds, the dialog box appears and the sketch is displayed.
there are three tabs, Model, Layout 1, and Layout 2. There are no layouts with this file. Click Next. Check Constraint Endpoints and apply geometric constraints. Click Finish. The sketch is imported. We can drag the geometry. If we check in the lower right hand corner, 26 dimensions are needed to fully constrain the sketch. Before we do that, let's rotate the sketch. Window Select the Sketch. Under Center Point, click Select. Select the point as shown and rotate as shown. Click Done. On the Modify panel, click Move. Select the lines again, select Base Point, and select the outside bottom point as shown and drag it to the origin. On the Constraint panel, click Auto Dimensions and Constraints. 26 dimensions are required. Click Apply. Then click Done. So with one command, we've gone from requiring 26 dimensions to a fully constrained sketch. It's not very organized looking, but it is fully constrained. Right click and Finish 2D Sketch. Return to the Home view. In the browser, right-click Sketch and turn off Dimension Visibility. Right-click and click Revolve. There are two profiles to select. Window Select the Profiles. For Axis, we can select the short vertical line to the right. Click OK, and the bottle cap body is created. Right click, click Fillet. Select the top edge. For radius value, enter 1.5. Click, click to add. Select the inside edge. For value, enter 0.5. Click, click to add. Rotate to view the inside of the bottle cap and select the edges. Select the edges as shown. There are five edges in total. And for value, enter 0.2. Click OK. Return to the Home view. On the Navigation bar, select Shaded with Hidden Edges. On the View panel, make sure you have Perspective with Ortho Faces selected. This view shows you the inside profile where the cap will fit over the bottle. Back to Shaded with Edges. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to add a grip to the outside of the bottle cap and create a pattern of the grips. I've started by opening the bottle cap part file. On the Sketch panel, click Start 2D Sketch. Expand the Origin folder in the browser and select the YZ plane. Zoom into the top left corner of the part. Press F7 for Slice Graphics. On the Create panel, click Project Geometry and project the four edges as shown. Right click, then click Line. Select the end point on the horizontal line and drag upwards. Enter 2 for the length of the line. Place the line. On the Constraint panel, click Collinear. Select the two lines. Click Cancel. 
The short line is collinear to the line below it. Right click and click line. Draw a line from the end point of the projected arc, making sure you select the end point. Drag at a shallow angle about one and a half millimeters long and place the line. On the Create panel, click Arc. Create an arc starting at the end point of the vertical line, going upwards towards the other line, but below the end point. Make sure the arc is curved to the left. Place the arc. On the Constraint panel, click Tangent. Place a tangent constraint between the arc and the vertical line and the sloping line and the arc. On the Modify panel, click Extend. Extend the short line. On the Modify panel, click Trim. And in this example, trim the arc. Right click then click Finish 2D Sketch. On the Work Features panel, click Axis. Select the top surface so that the axis is through the center of the cap. We do have an issue in that the work axis is below the sketch in the browser. This means we could not select the axis when we create the Revolve feature. Solve that by reordering the browser and moving the axis above the sketch. Right click, then click Revolve. The profile is selected, so we can select the axis. For direction, select Symmetric and enter an angle of 2. Click OK. On the Pattern panel, click Circular. Select the new feature. For Rotation Axis, select the new axis that you created. Under Placement, enter 60. Click OK. The grips are added to the outside surface of the bottle cap. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to add tabs to the bottle cap. I've started by opening the bottle cap part file. Right-click, then click New Sketch, and in the browser select the YZ plane. Zoom into the left-hand side of the cap. Press F7 for Slice Graphics. On the Create panel, click Project Geometry, and select the five edges as shown. Right-click, then click Line. Start by selecting the bottom right corner and drag up and select the point. Drag to the left, enter a value of 0.4. Drag down and to the left and select a point on the bottom line. Click to restart and close the profile. Right click then click General Dimension. Select the endpoints of the lower line. That dimension is going to be 0 0.7. Rotate around. We can now see that profile. Right click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Right click, then click Revolve. The profile is selected. For the axis, in the browser, select the work axis created previously. For direction, select Symmetric, and for angle, enter 4. Click OK. On the Pattern panel, click Circular. Select the new feature. For rotation axis, select the work axis. For number, enter 12 and click OK. The breakaway tabs are now created on the bottle.
Right-click, then click New Sketch. In the browser, select the YZ plane. Press F7 for Slice Graphics. Zoom and pan into the area. On the Create panel, click Project Geometry and select the long vertical line. Right-click, then click Line. Select the line, drag to the right, enter a value of 1. Drag vertically upwards, enter a value of 7, press Tab, and for Angle, enter a value of 90. At the top of the sketch, drag to the left to the projected line and click on the projected line. Click to restart and place a line to close the sketch profile. On the constraint panel, Click Dimension. Select the bottom horizontal line and the projected line. Place the dimension and enter 1. The sketch is now fully constrained. Right-click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Right-click, then click Revolve. We can see that the profile is selected. In the Graphics window, select the axis. Click OK. The Revolve feature we've just created is the area where the threads will be added to the cap to match the threads on the bottle. In the browser, right-click the work axis and turn off the visibility. Let's change the material. Bottle caps are made from polypropylene. Change the appearance to something bolder. Let's go with smooth red. And don't forget to save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create eye mates on the bottle and bottle cap and assemble the bottle and bottle cap. I've started by opening two existing files, the bottle and bottle cap part files, and I then created a new metric assembly file and named it bottle and cap. Let's go back to the bottle part file. On the Manage tab, Author panel, click iMate. iMates are defined as one half of a constraint pair. We need to review how the bottle cap is going to be assembled on the bottle. To do that, click Insert and select the top edge of the ridge. For Solution, click Aligned and click OK. The iMate symbol is displayed on the part. On the Author panel, click iMate. We're now going to place an angle constraint. In the browser, expand the Origin folder. Select the YZ plane. Click OK. In the browser, Expand the iMates folder. We see the two iMates named iInsert and iAngle. We will change the names. The first name will be Bottle01 and the second will be Bottle02. The two iMates are working together, so let's combine them. Select both iMates, then right-click and click Create Composite. That combines both together into a single item. Again, rename the iMate. We'll rename it to Bottle. Switch to the Bottle Cap Part file. This will be the same workflow as the Bottle. On the Manage tab, Author panel, click iMate. Under Type, Click Insert. Select the lower outside edge of the cap. For Solution, click Aligned 
and click OK. On the Author panel, click iMate. For Type, click Angle. In the browser, expand the Origin folder. Select the YZ plane. Click OK. Expand the iMates folder. Rename the first iMate to CAP01, and the second one will be CAP02. Select both iMates, then right-click and click Create Composite. Again, rename the iMate, and we'll rename it to Bottle. The name must match the name in the Bottle part file. Now let's go to the Bottle and Cap Assembly file. On the Component panel, click Place. In the Parts subfolder, select Bottle, and then click Open. Place one bottle, right-click and click OK. To ground the bottle, we have a number of options. For this part, in the browser, right-click the part, then click Grounded. Now I want to place the bottle cap. On the component panel, click Place. Click Interactively Place with iMates. In the Parts subfolder, select Bottle Cap. Click Open. The bottle cap is placed in the correct location. Right-click and click Place at all matching iMates. The bottle cap is correctly located and cannot rotate. Back to the home view. Save the files. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to use Extrude to create the bottom plate and add clearance holes to the part. I've started by creating a new metric part file and named it Bottom Plate. This plate is one of three parts that make up the bottle carousel. We can start a new assembly, then create all three parts in the assembly. This is known as top-down modeling. In our project, we will create individual part files, then place the parts in an assembly. This is known as bottom-up modeling. Right-click, then click New Sketch. Select the XZ plane. Right-click, then click Center Point Circle. Click on the origin. Move the cursor out. I want to place a diameter, so in this example, right-click, then click Diameter. Enter a value of 800. Return to the Home view. Right-click, then click OK. Right-click, then click Create Feature Extrude. Drag the preview downwards, and for distance, enter a value of 50. Click OK. Right-click, then click New Sketch. Select the top surface. On the Create panel, click Point, and place the point towards the top of the part. On the Constraint panel, click Vertical. Select the point and the origin. Right-click, then click General Dimension. Add a dimension between the point and the origin. Enter a value of 172.5. Right-click, then click OK. Right-click, then click Create Feature Hole. Rotate the part so you can view the hole preview. This is a clearance hole. There is no value for seat. The standard is ISO. The type is socket head cap screw. The size is M10. And for termination, select 2. Make sure select surface is selected. Select the bottom surface of the plate. The hole preview is shown. Click OK. On the Pattern panel, click Circular. Select the feature, click Rotation Axis, then select the outside surface of the part. For Number, enter 8. 
Click OK. Return to the Home View. On the Modify panel, click Chamfer. Select the top and bottom edge and a value of 2. Click OK. Let's change the material and appearance. From the material list, select Polyethylene High Density. From the appearance list, press B on the keyboard and select Blue Wall Paint Glossy. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you will be able to use Extrude to create the plate support and add clearance holes to the part. I started by creating a new metric part file and then named it Plate Support. Right click, then click New Sketch. Select the XZ plane. Right click, then click Center Point Circle. Click on the origin, drag it out, and enter a diameter of 370. Return to the Home view. We'll create a second circle starting at the origin with a diameter of 320. Right click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Right click, then click Extrude. Select the profile, then drag the profile down. For distance, enter a value of 90. Press Enter or click OK. Right click, then click New Sketch and select the top surface. On the View tab, make sure that Perspective with Ortho Faces is selected. Click Sketch tab, Create Panel, Point. Place a point on the top area of the support. On the Constraint panel, click Vertical. Select the point and the origin. On the Constraint panel, click Dimension. Place a dimension of 172.5 between the point and the origin. Right-click, then click OK. Right-click, then click Create Feature Hole. The hole is a clearance hole, and these are the previous values because we have last used selected. Rotate and select the bottom surface. Click OK. Return to the Home view. On the Pattern panel, click Circular. Select the new feature. Click Rotation Axis, then select the outside face. For count, enter 8. Then click OK. Change the material to polyethylene high density and change the appearance to blue wall paint glossy. Save your file. After completing this lesson, we will be able to use Extrude to create the top plate, create holes for the bottle locations, and add counterboard clearance holes to the part. I have started by creating a new metric part file, then named the file Top Plate. Right click, then click New Sketch. Select the XZ plane. Right click, then click Center Point Circle. Click on the origin and move the cursor out, then enter a diameter of 750. Return to the Home view. Right click, then click OK. Right click, then click Create Feature Extrude. Drag the profile down and enter a distance value of 50. Press Enter or click OK. 
Right click, then click New Sketch. Select the top surface of the plate. In this example, the surface is already selected. On the Create panel, click Point. Place a point towards the top of the plate. On the Constraint panel, click Vertical. Select the origin and the point. On the Constraint panel, click Dimension and place a dimension between the point and the origin. And that distance is 350. Right click, then click Center Point Circle. Select the point, move the cursor out, and enter a dimension value of 95. Right click, then click OK. Right click, then click Create Feature Extrude. Drag the feature down. We want this to be a cut. For distance, select 2. Rotate the part, then select the underside face. Click OK. Right click, then click Fillet. Select the two vertical edges. For radius, enter a value of 5 and click OK. On the Pattern panel, click Circular. In the Browser or in the Graphics window, select the Extrusion and the Fillet. Click Rotation Axis. Select the Outside Face. For Count, enter 8. Click OK. These holes are the location of the water bottles on the carousel. Right click, then click New Sketch. Select the top surface. On the View tab, make sure Perspective with Ortho Faces is selected. On the Sketch tab, Create Panel, click Point. Place a point above the origin. On the Constraint panel, click Vertical. Select the origin and the point. On the Constraint panel, click Dimension. Select the origin and the point then enter a dimension of 172.5. Right click, then click OK. Right click, then click Create Feature Hole. Rotate to view the hole preview. The hole is clearance. The seat is counterbore. Standard is ISO and socket head cap screw. The size is M10. The termination is 2. Rotate the part, then select the underside surface. Click OK. On the pattern panel, click Circular. Select the whole feature. Select Rotation Axis, then select the outside surface. For count, enter 8. Click OK. From the material list, select Polyethylene High Density. And from the appearance list, select Blue Wall Paint Glossy. Save your file. The bottom plate, plate support, and top plate are now modeled and will be assembled onto the gearbox assembly. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to model the camshaft. I've started a new metric part file and have named the file camshaft. On the sketch panel, click Start 2D Sketch. Click the XZ plane. Right click, then click Center Point Circle. Select the origin, then move the cursor out. For diameter, enter 50. Zoom out. Right click, then click Line. On the Format panel, click Construction. Place a horizontal construction line above the circle. Right click, then click OK. On the Format panel, click Construction to toggle it off. Right click, then click Create Line. Zoom in to the circle and the line. Click on the left side of the circle. Drag up 
and to the left. Press Tab, then enter 7.5 for the angle. Click to place the line. Right click, then click OK. Right click, then click Create Line. Click on the circle, drag up and to the right. Press Tab, then enter a value of 7.5. Click to place the line. Right click, then click OK. Note that construction lines are created as a reference for the angle dimension. On the constraint panel, click Tangent. Create tangency constraints between the lines and the circle. On the Modify panel, click Extend, and extend the two lines to the construction line. On the Create panel, click Arc. Click the end of the line on the left, and then on the right, and drag out. Enter a radius of 50. On the Modify panel, click Trim. Trim the ends of the construction line and the circle. On the Constraint panel, click Dimension. Place a dimension from the construction line to the origin. Enter a value of 70. Right-click, then click OK. The color of the sketch profile shows it is fully constrained. But if we look at the bottom right corner, there are two dimensions needed. In my sketch, it is the two short construction lines above the arc. The lines can be trimmed. The profile is fully constrained, and I will continue with the extrusion. Right-click, then click Create Feature Extrude. Zoom out to view the part. Drag the preview downwards, then enter a value of 10. Press Enter or click OK. Return to the Home view. Right-click, then click New Sketch. Select the top surface. Right-click, then click Center Point Circle. Select the origin, drag out, and enter a diameter of 29.5. Right-click, then click OK. Right-click, then click Create Feature Extrude. The profile is selected. For distance, enter 10. Press Enter or click OK. Rotate the part to view the underside. Right-click, then click New Sketch. Select the bottom surface. Right-click, then click Center Point Circle. Select the origin, drag out, and enter a diameter value of 38. Right-click, then click OK. Right-click, then click Create Feature Extrude. The profile is selected. Drag it down and enter a value of 50. Press Enter or click OK. Right-click, then click a New Sketch. Select the bottom surface. Right-click, then click Center Point Circle. Select the origin, drag out, and enter a diameter of 30. Right-click, then click OK. Right-click, then click Create Feature Extrude. Enter a value of 92. Return to the Home view. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to use Extrude to create a keyway and use Revolve to create a groove for a circlip. I've started by opening the camshaft part file. On the Work Features panel, from the Plane list, select Tangent to Surface and Parallel to Plane. Select the lower part of the camshaft. In the browser, expand the Origin folder, then select the YZ Plane. In the browser, right-click the Work Plane, then click New Sketch. Again in the browser, right-click the work plane and check Visibility 
to turn off the visibility of the work plan. On the Create panel from the Rectangle list, select Slot Center to Center. Click on the center of the shaft about halfway down to place the first point. Move up, then click to place the second point. Enter a value of 12. For the width of the slot, enter a value of 8. Right click, then click General Dimension. Place a dimension from the bottom edge to the center of the first arc. Enter a value of 39. The sketch is not fully constrained. It requires one dimension. If that dimension or constraint is not obvious, use Automatic Dimensions and Constraints. Click Apply. And in this case, it was a dimension of 4. Click Done. Right-click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Then right-click and click Extrude. The profile is selected. For Output, select Cut. And for Distance, enter 4. Click OK. The keyway has a small radius on the bottom edge. On the Modify panel, click Fill It. Select the bottom edge and for radius enter a value of 0 0.2. Click OK. Return to the Home view. In the browser, right click the XY plane, then click New Sketch. Zoom into the lower part of the camshaft. Press F7 for Slice Graphics. Right-click, then click Project Geometry. Select the lower horizontal line, then the adjacent vertical line. Zoom in closely to that area. Right-click, then click Two-Point Rectangle. Place a small rectangle. On the Constraint panel, click Collinear. Select the short vertical line and the projected line. Right-click, then click General Dimension. Select the lower horizontal line. This is the depth of the groove on one side. Enter a value of 0 0.7. Select the vertical line. The width of the clip is 1.5. Enter a dimension of 1.6 to provide clearance. The third dimension is from the top edge of the groove to the bottom of the camshaft. That dimension is 33. Right-click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Right-click, then click Revolve. The profile is selected. For the axis, hover over the axis in the browser. Select the Y axis. For output, select Cut. Click OK. Right click, then click Fill It. Rotate the model. Then select the two bottom edges of the groove. For radius, enter 0 0.05. Then click OK. The fillets provide stress relief at the base of the circlet groove. Return to the Home view. On the Modify panel, click Chamfer. I'm going to break the sharp edges on the camshaft. 
Select the edges as shown, and for distance, enter a value of 0 0.5. Click OK. Return to the Home view. From the Material list, select Steel Carbon. The camshaft material will be either a high carbon steel or a specialist foot grid alloy. For appearance, we'll leave it as the default of semi-polished. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a new assembly file, place the first component, and place the gearbox into the assembly. I started by creating a new metric assembly file and named the file Gearbox. Before we place a component, let's go to the Tools tab, Options panel, Application Options. On the Assembly tab, check that Place and Ground First Component at Origin is selected. Click OK or Close. On the Assemble tab, Component panel, click Place. From the Parts subfolder, Open P-100-001. Place one component, then right-click and click OK. On the View Cube, click Front, then click the top right-hand corner. Right-click, then click Set Current View as Home, and then click Fit to View. Return to the Home View. On the Component panel, click Place. From the Assembly subfolder, select A-014-001, then click Open. Click to place the assembly, then right-click and click OK. Let's review the part and the assembly. On the underside of the part are threaded holes for locating the gearbox assembly. On the Relationships panel, Click Joint. For type, from the list select Rigid. Zoom and pan to the top corner of the assembly. Select the hole with the center highlighted. Rotate the part around and select the center of a hole. We need to align the assembly. Under Align, click 1. Select the lower edge of the hole to the left. Rotate the assembly, zoom back in, and select the hole on the part. Click OK. Return to the Home view. In the browser, right-click the assembly, then click Open. Rotate the assembly, or right-click on the plate, then click Visibility. Let's review the gears. The larger spur gears have 79 teeth, and the smaller gears have 25 teeth. Dragging the large gear rotates the other gears, so constraints have been created. You will notice that the gears are not meshing properly. We'll look at how to resolve that in the next lesson. The area to the right of the large gear is where the motor will be assembled onto another smaller spur gear. In the next lesson, we will place the smaller gear in the assembly. Return to the home view. Save the file. After completing this lesson, You'll be able to place a gear in the assembly and add constraints to align the gears. I started by opening the gearbox assembly and the A014001 assembly. Make sure the visibility of the plate is off. The part is P100140. If it is visible, in the browser, right click the part and check Visibility to turn it off. We'll now insert a 25-tooth spur gear to drive the larger gear.
On the Component panel, click Place. In the Parts subfolder, select P-100-041, then click Open. Place one gear, right-click, then click OK. Right-click, then click Constraint. Select the center line of the gear and the center line of the hole. Click Apply. For solution, select Flush. Select the face of the larger gear. Hover until you get Select Other. There are two faces. Select the top face. Click OK. The gears can rotate, but they're not aligned correctly. Right-click on the small spur gear, then click Open. In the browser, there is a work plane named Gear Align. That was created previously. Right-click, then click Visibility. On the View Cube, click Front. The work plane goes through the center of a gear tooth. Back to the home view. Back to the browser, turn off the visibility of the work plane. Close the file and do not save changes. Right click then click Constraint. The small gear was the last part in the assembly. It is at the bottom of the list. Expand the listing, then select a gear align. Scroll back up to the top. The spur gear is the third one down. Select gear align. Now the gears are aligned correctly. Click OK. On the navigation bar, click look at and select the large spur gear. Pan over and zoom in. We can see that the gears are correctly aligned. In the browser, expand the Relationships folder. The last constraint added is the Mate constraint. If we try to rotate the gears now, the constraint prevents the motion. In the browser, right-click the constraint then click Suppress. We have motion, but the gears still aren't rotating together. Let's change the name of the constraint. Enter Suppress to Drive. When we are driving the gears, we need to suppress this constraint. That will also have to be done to the other meshing gears. In the next lesson, we'll add a constraint that allows the small gear to drive all the gears. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to use work planes to align the gears. I've started by opening two assembly files, the gearbox and A014001. Make A014001 the active file. Rotate the assembly. We see that the gears currently do not move. In the browser, expand the Relationships folder. We previously created a constraint named Suppress to Drive. Click Suppress to Drive, then click Suppress. The gears are free to move, but are not aligned correctly. Click Suppress to Drive, then click Suppress. Again, the gears can't move. We need to create a constraint that allows the intended motion. Select the small gear and the larger gear next to it. Right-click, then click Isolate. Right-click, then click Constraint. On the Motion tab, under Type, select Rotation. Under Solution, select Reverse. The diameter of the holes are the same, so I will select them. 
Click OK. Let's see what happened by creating the rotation constraint. Click Suppress to Drive, then click Suppress. Zoom in. Both gears are now moving, but are not meshing correctly. If required, click Undo to realign the gears. Let's go back to the browser. Click on the rotation constraint. The ratio is 1, but one gear tooth has 25 teeth and the other is 79. Enter 25 divided by 79, which is a value of 0 0.316. That is a gear reduction of 3.16 to 1. Now when I rotate the large gear, the gears are aligned and meshing correctly. Right-click the small gear, then click Undo Isolate. Zoom out. The small gear is the one that the motor is connected to, and when that is rotating, all the gears in the mechanism are rotating correctly. For the production file, we will align all the gears using the gear align constraints. Return to the home view and save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to use Extrude to create a keyway groove in the gear. I've started by opening the A014001 assembly file. We now have a large number of items in the browser. To organize the files, we can create subfolders. In the browser, right-click on the assembly name, then click Create New Folder. Name the folder Fasteners. Select the first fastener, hold down the Shift key, then select the last one. Drag them into the Fastener subfolder. This makes it easier to navigate in the browser. We can also move the spur gear below the other spur gears. Rotate the assembly, noting that the plate P100-140 is not visible. Right-click on the large gear, then click Open. Right-click, then click New Sketch. Select the face. On the View tab, make sure you have Perspective with Ortho Faces selected. Back to the Sketch tab. On the Create panel, click Line. We're going to create three lines. Start on the left by clicking on the edge of the circle, then move vertically upwards about 4 millimeters. Move to the right and enter a value of 8 for the horizontal line, then press Enter and move down to the circle. You may have to zoom in to make sure you're selecting the correct point. On the Constraint panel, Click Vertical. Select the midpoint of the line and the center point of the gear. The sketch is now aligned to the center of the gear. On the Constraint panel, click Dimension. Select the horizontal line and the center point. The dimension value is the radius of 15 plus 3.3 which is the depth of the keyway on the gear. Enter 18.3. Right-click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Right-click again, then click Extrude. Zoom in, then select the profile. For output, select Cat. And for Distance A, select 2. Rotate the gear and select the face. Click OK. Return to the Home view. Save your file, then close the file. In the assembly, the keyway is visible on the gear. Back to the Home view. Save your file.
After completing this lesson, you will be able to place an oil seal in the assembly, place the camshaft in the assembly, and assemble the key onto the camshaft. I have continued from the last lesson, and I have the A014001 assembly open. I also have the gear file open, but we won't be using that one. Note that I have an update from the previous session indicated by the symbol. On the Quick Access toolbar, click Local Update. For significant changes, a Global Update option is also available. On the Component panel, click Place. In the Purchase Parts subfolder, select Oil Shaft Seal. Click Open. Place one component, then right click and click OK. Let's review the oil seal. The top and bottom are different, so let's use Free Rotate and review both faces. We're going to be aligning the bottom face into the assembly. On the Relationships panel, click Joint. For Type, select Rigid. There are several edges, so be careful you select an edge on the bottom face. There are two possibilities. Zoom and pan to the location for the oil seal, then select the edge. The oil seal is moved into place, check that the alignment is correct, and then click OK. Back to the home view. Right click, then click Place Component. In the Parts subfolder, select Camshaft. Click Open. Place one component, then right click and click OK. Select Free Rotate. Rotate the part so you can see the underside of the camshaft. On the Relationships panel, click Joint. Select the edge. Then select the edge of the hole. In this case, rotational is correct. I want to add an offset to provide clearance. The preview arrow is pointing downwards, which is the positive direction. Enter a value of negative 1.0. Click OK. Back to the home view. I like to check that the parts are still rotating or behaving as expected after I've placed a constraint. Right click, then click Place from Content Center. Navigate to the shaft parts, keys, keys machine, and select Rounded. Select the 1A key. Click OK. Shaft diameter is 22 to 30, and the length is 20. Click OK. Place one component, then right click and click OK. Select the key and the camshaft. Right click, then click Isolate. Move the key closer to the keyway, then zoom into the key and the keyway. On the Relationships panel, click Joint. Select the center of the arc on the top of the key. Rotate around, then select the point on the bottom face. For Type, select Rigid. The orientation is correct, click OK. Back to the Home view. Right-click the camshaft, then click Undo Isolate. Return to the Home view. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you will be able to align the key and keyway on the shaft and gear. Place a circlip on the camshaft and drive the gears. I started by opening the A014001 
.001 assembly file. In this example, an update is required from the previous lesson. Click Local Update. In the browser, select the camshaft and move it below the gearing. In the graphics window, select the camshaft, rotate the assembly and then select the large gear. Right-click, then click Isolate. Back to the home view. With the parts isolated, in the browser, expand Spur Gearing, then expand the Origin folder. Workplane 3 goes through the center of the gear. Expand the camshaft and the Origin folder. The XY plane goes through the center of the camshaft. On the Relationships panel, click Constrain. Select the XY plane and Work Plane 3. Change the display to Wireframe with Hidden Edges. We want to check if the key and the key we are aligned. In this case, they are not. We can see the key is on one side and the keyway is on the other. For solution, click Flush. The key and keyway are now aligned. Click OK. Back to the Home view and back to Shaded with Edges. Right-click on the camshaft and click Undo Isolate. Back to the Home view. Again, checking the camshaft is still free to rotate. Rotating the part around, we can see the gears are still rotating correctly as well. Zoom in closely, and we can see that the gear, the keyway, and the shaft are aligned. Back to the Home view. Rotate the assembly, then zoom into the camshaft. We have a circlip to add, and if we look to our left, there is one that already exists. Right-click the circlip, then click Find in Browser. Drag the highlighted part into the assembly to place another circlip. On the Relationships panel, click Joint. Select the lower edge on the clip, and the lower edge on the camshaft. Change type to rotational, then click OK. Rotate the assembly. The clip is 1.5 millimeters, and we created a groove 1.6 millimeters. So we have a 0.1 millimeter clearance. Back to the home view. Rotate the assembly. The small gear is where the motor will be assembled to. Let's find that in the browser. Select it and we'll see it highlighted. Expand the listing and we see the gear align work plane that we created previously. On the Relationships panel, click Constrain. Click Gear Align. Rotate the assembly to locate a flat face that is perpendicular to the gear assembly. Select Angle Constraint, then select the flat face. For solution, select Undirected Angle. Click OK. In the browser, change the name of the new constraint to Drive Me. Back to the home view. The angle constraint prevents the camshaft from rotating. If we want to drag the camshaft to demonstrate the motion, we can suppress the constraint and it rotates. Note that driving the constraint works with it suppressed or unsuppressed. Change the display to wireframe with hidden edges. In the browser, right click Drive Me then click Drive. For value, enter 3600. Expand the dialog box 
for increment enter 10. Click forward. We can see that the camshaft, keys and gears are aligned and rotating correctly. Back to the beginning. Change the increment to 1. When the controls are being designed for the bottle filling station, the speed of the motor and the time required to rotate the bottle filling station carousel will have to be determined. This animation provides a preview of what will be required. Click Cancel. Change the view back to Shaded with Edges. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to assemble the bearing ring and gearbox and assemble the rotating plate to the bearing ring. I've started by opening the A014001 assembly file. The plate on the underside is not visible. For this exercise, I will leave visibility toggled off. On the component panel, click Place. From the Purchase Parts subfolder, select Bearing Ring, then click Open. Place one component, then right-click and click OK. On the Relationships panel, click Joint. Select the edge of a hole on the bearing ring and then on the gearbox. If required, click Flip Component. For type, select Rigid. Click Align. Then select the bottom hole on the bearing plate and the hole on the gearbox. Click OK. Return to the Home view. The inside part of the bearing ring should be free to rotate, but it is not rotating. In the browser, right-click Bearing Ring and select Flexible. Drag on the ring and we can see that it now rotates freely. On the Design tab Fasten panel, click Bolted Connection. There are two types, Through All and Blind Connection. Select Blind Connection. Select the top face of the bearing ring. Select the existing hole. We want to follow the pattern of the eight holes. Click Blind Start Plane, which will be the top of the plate on the gearbox. Click to add a fastener. In a few seconds, the dialog box is displayed. Under Bolts, select Socket Head Bolts, then select ISO 4762. The bolt is automatically sized. Click OK. On the view cube, click Front. Change the display to wireframe with hidden edges. Make sure you have perspective with ortho faces toggled on. Zoom into one of the cap screws and we can see that the bottom of the cap screw is above the base of the threaded hole in the plate. Back to the home view. Back to Shaded with Edges. On the Assemble tab, Component Panel, click Place. From the Parts subfolder, scroll down and select P-100-044. Click Open. Place one component, then right-click and click OK. On the Relationships panel, click Joint. For type, select Rigid. Click the hole in the bottom of the plate and a hole on the bearing ring. If required, click Flip Component. Click Align. Rotate the assembly. Select the hole to the left.
Then click the hole on the plate. Click OK. Return to the Home view. Using the previous workflow, I used Bolted Connection on the Design tab and added the pattern of bolts to the plate, which attaches it to the bearing ring. With the bearing ring rotating, the plate also rotates. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a contact set and activate the contact solver. I've started by opening the A014001 assembly file. On the navigation bar, select Wireframe with Hidden Edges. Rotate the assembly so you can see both the top and bottom part. Drag on the large gear. Above you can see the camshaft turning, but the plate that we inserted in the last lesson is not. Return to Shaded with Edges. In the browser, select the camshaft and P100044. Right-click, then click Isolate. Drag the camshaft. As we rotate it, we want it to move the plate that it's making contact with. In the browser, select the two parts, then right-click and click Contact Set. With the contact set created, rotate the camshaft. The plate does not move. Click Inspect, Interference Panel, Activate Contact Solver. Now when we rotate the camshaft, the contact solver senses the contact and moves the other part. Right-click the camshaft, then click Undo Isolate. Let's change back to Wireframe with Hidden Edges. Again, drag on the large gear, and this time when the camshaft makes contact, the plate rotates. For our project, the motor will be driving the small spur gear. Return to Shaded with Edges. It is good practice to toggle off the contact solver when you are not using it. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you will to assemble the bottle carousel on the gearbox and drive the bottle carousel. I've started by opening the A014001 assembly file. Click Inspect, Interference, Activate Contact Solver to toggle it off. Click Assemble, Component, Place. In the Parts subfolder, Select Bottom Plate. Click Open. Place one component, then right-click and click OK. On the Relationships panel, click Joint. From the Type list, select Rigid. Select the hole on the bottom plate and the hole on the rotating plate. Flip the component. Click Align. Rotate the assembly, then select the hole to the left. Rotate back again and select the hole to align the plate. Click OK. Return to the Home view. Right-click, then click Place Component. In the Parts subfolder, scroll down and select Plate Support. Click Open. Place one component, then right-click and click OK. On the Relationships panel, click Joint.
support type, select Rigid. Select the hole on the support plate and the hole on the bottom plate. It looks as if it's aligned, but let's check. Click Align. Select the hole on the bottom face and then a hole on the plate. Click OK. Back to the Home view. Right-click, then click Place Component. Scroll down and select Top Plate. Click Open. Place one component, then right-click and click OK. On the Relationships panel, click Join. Change the type to Rigid. On this part, we have counterboard holes, so we will have to select from the underside surface. Click a hole, and then a hole on the support plate. Flip the component. Click Align, rotate the part, and select the hole to the left. Select the hole on the support plate. Click OK. Back to the Home view. Drag on the top plate, and the assembly rotates. On the navigation bar, select Wireframe with Hidden Edges. Rotate the assembly and zoom into the large gear. Click Inspect, Interference, Activate Contact Solver. Drag the gear. Depending on the position of the camshaft, you may have to do one or two revolutions. The camshaft connects and moves the plate. While the camshaft is rotating, but not in contact, that is the time when a bottle has been filled with water. Back to the home view and back to shaded with edges. Toggle off Activate Contact Solver and then back to the Assemble tab. Click Design Fasten Bolted Connection. For type, select Blind Connection. Select the top surface, then select the hole. Click Follow Pattern. Click Blind Start Plan, then select the top surface of the bottom plate. Click to add a fastener. From the bolts list, select Socket Head Bolts. Select the forged socket head cap screw. It is automatically sized. Click OK. In the browser, right-click P100-140, then click Visibility to toggle the visibility on. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to modify the base plate and modify the frame. I have started by opening the bottle filling station assembly file. I received a design change request for the base plate and frame. The upper frame has a frame member in the center to support the doors. We have to suppress holes and the assembly of the cap screw, washer and nut. We will start with the first rectangular pattern. Moving over the occurrences highlights them in the model. Right click then click suppress for both occurrences, one at the front of the frame and one at the back. Below end of features expand the first component pattern. Again moving over the elements suppress the two cap screw, washer and nut assemblies. Right click base then click edit. There's another pattern to be dealt with, and these are the counterboard holes on the base plate. 
Right click, then suppress both occurrences. The holes and assemblies are suppressed. Expand extrusion, right click the sketch, then click Edit Sketch. On the Create panel, click Rectangle. We're going to create two small rectangles, which are the same dimensions as the other four cutouts. Enter 60, press Tab, then enter 65. Create a second rectangle. Enter 60, press Tab, then enter 65. Zoom into the top of the frame. On the Constraint panel, click Horizontal. Click on the midpoint of the top line on the rectangle and the midpoint on the top edge of the frame. On the Constraint panel, click Collinear. Select the top line of the rectangle and the edge of the frame. Repeat the workflow for the second rectangle. A horizontal constraint. and a collinear constraint. Right-click and click Finish 2D Sketch. In the browser, right-click Extrusion, then click Edit Feature. We could add the profiles. I find it easier to clear the profiles and then reselect the profile. Click OK. Right-click, then click Finish Edit. The required design change is now complete. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to add work planes to the gearbox assembly and constrain the assembly to the frame. I started by opening two files, the bottle filling station assembly and the gearbox assembly. The active file is the gearbox. I'm going to be adding two work planes to the gearbox assembly so that we can place it on the bottle filling station frame. Before we do that, a design review has shown that an edit to the plate is required. Expand the assembly folder, then right click P10140, then right click Edit. Right click the extrusion, then click Edit Sketch. Double click on 19 and change the value to 30. This is to match the diameter on the shaft on the motor. Right-click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Back to the Home view. Right-click, then click Finish Edit. On the Work Feature panel, click Axis. Select the first hole. Right-click, then click Repeat Work Axis. And select the second hole. Right-click, then click Repeat Work Axis, rotate the assembly, and add the third work axis. On the Work Features panel, click Plane. Select two work axes to create the work plane. Repeat the work plane command, and select two axes. Back to the Home view. Save your file. Make the bottle filling station assembly the active file. Right click, then click Place Component. From the Assembly subfolder, select Gearbox and click Open. Then click to place one component, then right click and click OK. I've turned off Adaptive on the base, but to prevent the base plate moving, I'm going to ground the part. Right click, then click Grounded. Right-click, then click Constraint. Rotate the model and select the underside face of the gearbox. And the top face of the base plate. Click Apply. Zoom in, then select the work plane at the front, the front face of the base plate.
The offset is negative 300. Click Apply. Rotate around and select the second work plane and the face at the end of the base plate. For solution, select Flush and for offset, enter 400. Click OK. Return to the Home view. On the View Cube, click Top, and on the Navigation bar, select Wireframe with Hidden Edges. Zoom into the gearbox and look at the area where the motor will be assembled with a small spur gear. Note that it is off-center. Back to Shaded with Edges. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you will be able to create holes in the base plate to attach the gearbox and create an opening and holes on the base plate for the motor. I have two assembly files open from the previous lesson, bottle filling station and gearbox. We will be working on the bottle filling station. In the browser, expand the gearbox listing, select the two work planes, then right-click and turn off the visibility. Right-click Base, then click Edit. Right-click, then click New Sketch. Select the top surface of the base plate. There is an extra projected point. I will delete the point. Zoom into the motor. On the Create panel, click Project Geometry, then select the four holes. We can also select the center of the small spur gear where the motor will be attached. We've been using different workflows to select commands. We can also use keyboard shortcuts. Enter H to start the hole command. The hole is a clearance hole, seat is none, and we can see the fastener values. Select the centers of the four holes. For termination, click 2, and then click Select Surface. Select the underside of the base plate. Click OK. Back to the Home view. I want to share the sketch. Right-click on the sketch. Because it's adaptive, we cannot. Turn off Adaptive on the hole. Right-click on the sketch again, and share the sketch. If we turn Adaptive back on, the hole is adaptive, the sketch is no longer adaptive. Right-click the sketch, then click Edit Sketch. Zoom into the hole. Right-click, then click Create Center Point Circle. Enter a circle diameter of 260. Right-click, then click Finish 2D Sketch. Enter E for Extrusion. Make sure you select the small circle in the center and then the large circle. We want this to be a cut. Select 2. Rotate the base plate and select the underside of the base plate. Click OK. Back to the Home view. In the browser, right-click Gearbox and turn off the visibility. Right-click, then click New Sketch and select the top face of the base plate. Zoom into the center. On the Create panel, click Point and place a point just above the opening. The point is a similar color to the base plate. You may want to change the color of the base plate temporarily. On the Constraint panel, click Horizontal. Select the center and the point. Project the geometry of the circle. Click Dimension and place a dimension between the point and the center of the circle. 
The value is 160. Rotate the model around. Enter H to start the whole command. For type, it's counterbore and seat is none. Review the fastener values. For termination, click 2, then click Select Surface, and select the underside surface of the base plate. Click OK. Back to the Home view. On the Pattern panel, click Circular. Select the whole feature. Click Rotation Axis and select the hole. There are six holes. Click OK. In the browser, turn off the visibility of the sketch. I want to mirror the features that I have created on the base plane. Start by creating a mid-plane between two planes. Select one face, then select the other to create the work plane. With the work plane created, on the Pattern panel, click Mirror. In the browser, select the features, starting with the circular pattern that includes the hole, then the extrusion, and then one more hole. The Mirror plane is the work plane. Click OK. In the browser, right-click the work plane and toggle off the visibility. Right-click, then click Finish Edit. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to place two motors in the assembly and assemble the motors to the base plate. I've started by opening the bottle filling station assembly file. Right-click, then click Place Component. From the Purchased Parts subfolder, scroll down and select Motor. Click Open. Place two motors in the assembly, then right-click and click OK. On the Relationships panel, click Joint. For type, select Rigid. Rotate the frame so you're looking from the back of the frame towards the motors. The controls are going to be placed at the back of the station, so we will align the motors with the box facing to the back. Select the hole on the motor above the connection box. Select the hole on the base plate closest to the back. Click Align, then zoom and pan into one of the adjacent holes. Select the bottom edge, rotate the motor, then select the hole on the base plate. Click OK. I could click Apply, but I want to check that the position is correct. Right click and repeat joint. Selecting the same hole on the motor and the base plate. For type, select Rigid, click Align, select the bottom edge of the hole, rotate the motor, and when it's aligned, click the edge of the hole. Click OK. Back to the Home view. Check the position of the motors. They are correct. The controls can be wired into the motors from the back of the frame. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to add fasteners to the gearbox and base plate 
and assemble the second gearbox onto the frame. I've started by opening the bottle filling station assembly file. In the browser, right click gearbox, then click visibility to turn the visibility on. Right click the gearbox and click flexible. Zoom into the carousel, drag on the carousel, we can see it is free to rotate. Back to the home view. In the browser, expand the gearbox. Select the work axis, hold down the shift key and select the work plane. Right click, then click visibility to turn the visibility off. On the design tab, click bolted connection. For type, select through all. The start plane is the top of the gearbox assembly. Select the hole. Select follow pattern. Click termination and revolve the assembly around. Then select the underside face of the base plate. Click to add a fastener. From the bolts list, select socket head bolts. Then select ISO 4762. Click to add a fastener. This will be a washer. Select ISO 7089. On the underside of the base plate, we're going to add a washer. So click to add a fastener, then select ISO 7089 again. Click to add a fastener, and select ISO 4032. Click OK. Review the four fastener assemblies. Back to the home view. Using what you've learned in the previous lessons, add the second gearbox assembly and fastener assemblies. Both gearboxes are set to flexible so that we can prove our design by rotating the bottle carousel. Back to the home view. On the navigation bar, click wireframe with hidden edges. On the view cube, click top. Note the location of the small spur gears and the drive shaft of the motors. You will have to double check this when you assemble the second motor onto the frame. Back to the home view. Back to shaded with edges. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to animate the doors on the upper frame and place the upper frame in the assembly. I've started by opening two assembly files, bottle filling station and frame upper. Let's make frame upper the open file. In the browser, expand the relationships folder. On review, we can see drive me cover and suppress to drive constraints for both doors. We can also see transitional constraints. Let's review that type of constraint. It's the third tab and there is one type. In this design, transitional was used to guide the door in the frame. There is a purchase part attached to the door with a small pin, which is guided in the frame by a slot. If we look at the transitional constraint, there are two selections, the pin and then the flat face of the slot that it runs in. Click Cancel. In the browser, right-click Drive Me Cover 1 and then click Drive. The start end settings are 0 and negative 90. Click Reverse and we see the door open. The door is supported by the gas springs. 
click Cancel. I prefer to click Cancel as it sets the assembly back to the original position. Looking at the door frames, these are purchased aluminum extruded parts which were cut to length and then assembled. Now we're going to move to the bottle filling station. Make it the open file. Right click then click place component. In the assembly subfolder select frame upper then click open. Place one frame then right click and click OK. Zoom into the bottom right hand corner. We see the frame and a bracket. The bracket will be welded onto the lower frame and then bolted to the upper frame at the time of installation. On the Relationships panel, click Constrain. Select the bottom face of the frame, then rotate around and select the top face of the lower frame. Click Apply. This has placed the assembly way over to the left. To make it easier, click Cancel, then drag the frame over and zoom into that area. Move it outside so you can select the faces more easily. Right click, then click Constraint. For solution, select Flush. Select the front face and then the front face on the frame. For offset, enter 10, then click Apply. Select the end face and the face on the frame. For offset, enter 10. Click Apply so we can check the placement. Zoom in. We can see the frames line up correctly. With the frame in the correct position, we can click Cancel. Back to the Home view. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to animate the doors in the bottle filling station assembly and place the bottle and cap assembly on the carousels. I've started by opening two assembly files, the bottle filling station and frame upper. We will be working on the bottle filling station. In the browser, right click frame upper, then click flexible. Note the browser icon for flexible. The covers are also flexible, but if I right-click the Drive Me Cover constraint, you'll notice that Drive is not available in the list. That's because this is a sub-assembly inside the assembly. To resolve that, right-click then click Constraint. For solution, select Angle. Select the top face of the door frame and the base plate. I'm going to use explicit reference vector so I'll select a horizontal edge. For angle enter 25 click OK. Open the relationships folder. Right click the angle constraint then click drive. Start end are set to 25 and 35. Click forward and we see it's going in the wrong direction and you get an error message. For end, enter 0 to check it in the other direction, then click back. That's correct. For end, enter negative 60. That gives a door opening of 85 degrees. Expand the dialog box and select Start and Start and three repetitions. And change the increment to two degrees. Click forward and the door opening is animated. On the view cube, click left to get a better view of the animation. The door is fully extended and the gas spring is also fully extended. The operator would then pull the door down against the gas spring.
Click reverse to see that again. The operator would open the door, unload the full bottles, and then load empty bottles. When that process is complete, the operator would close the door and start the operation of filling the water bottles. Click Cancel to return the door to the original position. Return to the Home view. Right-click, then click Place Component. From the Assembly subfolder, select Bottle and Cap, and click Open. Place one bottle, then right-click and click OK. Use Free Rotate to view the bottom face of the bottle. Right-click, then click Constraint, and select the bottom face of the bottle, then the face on the bottom plate of the carousel. Click Apply. Select the axis of the bottle and the axis of the opening. Click OK. On the Pattern panel, click Pattern. Select the bottle and cap. On the Circular Pattern tab, select Axis Direction. Then select the outside face of the carousel. For count, enter 8. And for angle, enter 360 divided by 8. Click OK and we see the 8 bottles placed on the carousel. Repeat the workflow and place 8 bottles on the other carousel. The design of the bottle filling station is now complete and we're ready to document the design. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a new drawing file, modify the document settings, add a shaded view of the bottle filling station, and complete the title block properties. I started by opening the Bottle Filling Station assembly file. On the Quick Access toolbar, click New. Select NC Metric IDW, then click Create. Change the name of the first sheet. I like to give them meaningful names. In this case, it's going to be Assembly. In the Drawing Resources folder, there are four options. On the Sheet Formats, we have Layouts, one Default Border, and two Title Blocks. We're using the ANSI Large. Collapse Drawing Resources. On the Tools tab, click Document Settings. On the Sheet tab, change the background color. Select White. Click OK. Click OK again. Click Place Views tab. Right click Assembly, then click Edit Sheet. Change the size to A3. Click OK. To place the first view, right-click, then click Base View. The preview displays the open file. On the View Cube, click Home. In the dialog box, set the scale to 1 to 20. Center the view. Under Style, Hidden Line Removed and Shaded are selected. Click OK. Note that the drawing file name is now Bottle Filling Station. In the browser, right-click Bottle Filling Station, then click Eye Properties. 
On the Summary tab for Title, enter Bottle Filling Station For author, I'm using Autodesk Inc. You should use your own name. I'm going to copy that because I'm using it three times. Paste it into Company, and for Category, enter Mechanical. On the Project tab, for Part Number, enter A-001. For Designer, I am pasting in Autodesk Inc. Back up to revision number, which is zero. For estimated cost, which will not appear in the title block, enter $5,000. For status, there are three options. Work in progress is correct. There are no custom properties, and save is correct. Back to the general tab. Click OK and the title block is populated with the information from iProperties. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you will be able to create three drawing views of the frame, add dimensions to the frame, and add notes to the frame. Continuing from the previous lesson, I have the Bottle Filling Station assembly file and the Bottle Filling Station drawing open. Right click and click a New Sheet. Rename it to Frame. Right click, then click Base View. Navigate to the Frame subfolder, then select the first frame. Click Open. Using the view cube, I could get the view I wanted, but let's look at another option. Right-click the view cube and select Custom View Orientation. We can use the typical viewing tools. I'm going to rotate the frame. On the view cube, click right, then rotate. Change to Perspective with Ortho Faces, and click Finish Custom View. Move the view to the left, for scale enter 1 to 20, move upwards then click to place a top view. We don't need a right side view but I do want an isometric which I'll use for the materials list. Right click and click OK. Move the views. Move the isometric down. We're going to be placing a materials list in the top right hand corner. Isometric views appear much larger, so right click and click Edit View. Change the scale to 1 to 25. Press Enter or click OK. With the views created, I can now add dimensions. On the Annotate tab, I typically start by looking for parts that require center lines. There are none in this drawing. Click Dimension. I'm adding the overall dimensions of length, height, and width. Start with the overall length of the frame. As you place the dimension, note the dotted lines that appear at preset distances away from the view. These can be modified. Now the overall height. Let's go to the second preset position and click to place the dimension. On the navigation bar, click Zoom All. This is a very useful tool in the drawings. The keyboard shortcut is the Home key. Now add the width, select the horizontal line and then the top horizontal line and place the dimension in line with the dimension below. Right click and click OK. On the Manage tab, click Styles Editor.
Click NC Millimeter. On the General tab, you can select Units. On the View Preferences tab is Projection Type. If you're working on projects from around the world, they may be using first angle or third angle projection. Let's expand dimension. Select Default Millimeter NC. Set Linear Precision to 0 and the same for Angular. On the Display tab, change Extension to 1.5. The standards within your company or classroom will determine all of these settings. Click Save and Close. Review the drawing to see the changes. We now have whole numbers and the extension line is much shorter. I've added four more dimensions, two dimensions of 380 for the supports and 160 for the size of the end caps. I will now add a note for installation. On the Annotate tab, click Leader Text. Select the end cap. Click once, then move to the right. Right-click and click Continue. Enter the note. Drill four holes, diameter 22, at Installation. Click OK. I have added a second node, which is attached to the frame. The node is Use Base Plate as Template for Bolt Holes. Save your file. After completing this lesson, you will be able to use Style and Standard Editor, place a material list in the drawing, and modify the material list. Continuing from the previous lesson, I have the Bottle Filling Station Assembly and Bottle Filling Station Drawing open. On the Manage tab, Styles and Standards panel, click Styles Editor. Expand Parts List, then select Material List. Select the Quantity row, then click the Substitution tab. Select Enable Value Substitution. If PL is not displayed, click the down arrow, go to Browse Properties, then scroll through the properties and select PL. The sum of values should also be selected. This will take the overall length of each frame member and add them together. For precision, select 0. And for units, select meters. Click OK. Click Save and Close. On the Annotate tab, Table Panel, click Parts List. From the list, select Material List. This is the list type we just modified. Select the isometric view, then right-click and click OK. Place the list in the top right-hand corner of the drawing. Let's review the list and decide what changes we want to make. A row has been added for the end caps, and I want the visibility of the row toggled off. I also want the four items column as the first column. Right-click the Parts list, then click Edit Parts list. Select the row for the end caps, right-click, then click Visible to turn the visibility off. Select the Total Quantity column, then right-click and select Column Width. Change the column width to 25. We can also do that by dragging the columns and changing the width. This can also be done in the drawing. Click Column Chooser. Under Selected Properties, select Four Items and click Move Up until it is the first item. Click OK. Move the dialog down. Click Apply and we can see the changes that were made. Click OK. The drawing is now complete. We have drawings for both the assembly and the frame. Save your file.